These women live inside a secret world, a world most people can't gain access to. Trying to get inside a fetish shrine to speak to them is very difficult, but why so much secrecy? Trokusi is a traditional practice among the Angro Ebes in the Volta region of Ghana, Togo, and Benin. It is commonly believed that women are held captive in fetish shrines to atone for the crimes committed by their families, for crimes as petty as stealing a goat. Stories of rape, starvation, and child labor have plagued the media. Human rights advocates have perceived this practice as a violation of women's rights. Actions of people that negatively affect the other person is a human rights issue. And for us, looking at the women who serve under the priesthood, we think that they don't have their total freedom and that they have to always serve the, the priests that um, um, become more or less their father or their husband. Traditionalists continue to protect the practice, claiming it is misunderstood. Women betrothed to priests or kings to marry are not women who are to be, you know, molested or just handled anyhow. They are queens and married to, you know, kings or people in the community. The practice was outlawed in 1998 when the media war between the Africania Mission, a group protecting Troncosi, and International Needs, a Christian organization liberating the Troncosi women, broke out. International Needs is uh, a non-governmental, as far as I know, it's a non-governmental organization, Christian-based. And uh, they started a campaign, a propaganda campaign, Sometime, I think, 19, uh, the late 90s, and they started that campaign. And they say they are liberating trocosis and they are giving them, you know, right of place or something. And they are trying to, you know, retain their human rights. What I know about the liberation is, is a negotiation, you understand, between um, the shrine owners, the priests, and then I am. Um, we are looking at the freedom of women who have been in these shrines. And uh, after we've negotiated, we take these women, we take them through psychological counseling to actually prepare them for um, um, reintegration. And then we give them, as part of it, we give them vocational skill training in all forms. Okay. Yes, that is what the liberation process is about. Benujo. <laughs> You are a young neighbor. 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 You are a young I visited the International Needs Vocational School initially made for liberated troncosies. I discovered that no troncosy women were there for training. International Needs has not been able to liberate any women since 2003. The only troncosy women the International Needs wanted us to speak to were the same women that have appeared countless times in the media. Both women are employed by International Needs. I'm going to go to the manager. 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 I
mo koji go ora si o bible di akoti adon na do ora fa gba lo o do si photo photo le ora kina bi nu ah o ha te para ke ipo mo ngo ta do ku lan go e mi divi a wi e tete mi adon e bi ndudu e kura po ne mi adun a mi pe pri de vio ta fu pe mi no la ga ma to 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 do ne mi na ve di apa na mo ro mi e ya mo aglo ma ve mo o do mi ve sati a jira ka po ga vi ha pro si pa ko 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 kura na de vio uh, I think, I don't know, but I think money was involved. Therefore, the more they lie to the world and the more they present the negative side of African traditional religion to the world, the more money they get. So their stories, you know, is not proper. They've not been fair to African traditional religion. If we look at Trocosi as um, a religion, then we may be missing because being the traditional religion or those who support tra traditional religion just like african will be saying that we are trampling on their rights because they will be looking at this as if christian religion is coming uh, over traditional religion not knowing who to believe i thought it was important to talk to the priests and women inside the shrines in the region as well. If we talk with the women who are involved in the trocracy, they may be saying that they are not suffering or their rights are not being trampled upon. But we should also understand that it is a psychology of the people that plays a lot of role in, in this situation. The women will be thinking, if I get out, what happens to me? What happens to uh, my family? November this year. Following the investigations of the first shrine, I felt the need to further investigate the issue and we decided to visit a second shrine in Kliko. Because of delays during the day, our second shrine visit took the people inside the shrine by surprise and it was here that we ran into several Piasidi women. To them? Yeah. Without yeah, people yeah, yelling. We are going to the, the, the third shrine. We're going to go to the third shrine. They are going there. They are, they are waiting for us. Okay, we're going to go in yeah, five minutes. Yeah. We just want to get some shots of them and talk to them without all the pressure and this big See, this one is a newly person. He doesn't know anything here. Okay. And this one too is mentally sick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, he can't talk. Yeah. This is a sickness which brought him here. Yeah. Mm. And this one is a new person. He doesn't know. He hasn't come here before. This is the first time. Okay. okay, but is it just two minutes? Two minutes and then we'll go to the next shrine. Maybe you don't know anything to tell you. Mm. Well, let's go to the other one and see how well you can pick this. Okay. 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 Hey, <laughs> Okay, 
I noticed while interviewing the women that there were fears about speaking up because the priest and other elders of the shrine were present. To continue my quest, I had to see one more shrine. Inside, I found a group of young girls who had just returned from school. If there's truly nothing to be hidden and nothing to hide, then we should be able to talk to them alone. Oh, well, that is true. But there are some questions which you ask. Maybe Fafa will not interpret it well for them. Well, we'll figure out a way. Huh? We'll figure out a way to interpret it. <laughs> I don't understand you. We'll figure out a way. I, all I'm saying is that it's really important that we talk to them alone, just to prove to ourselves that like there's no infiltration. Because I feel like when we spoke to those women, we were not able to do an interview because there was so much talk mm. and they were not allowed to speak, knowing that maybe they're saying something different because you're standing there. It's not a good interview. Like we have to talk to them alone. Okay. Okay. No, I think we can stand here. Okay. Mm. No, no, we can't have anybody listening to the interview. Like, you can stand in there if you'd like to, but we feel like if they speak and you hear, they'll be scared. Although these girls were in school, I learned that Fiashidi girls are only allowed to go to school up to the junior high level for fear that they might abandon the tradition once they reach higher levels of education. After speaking to international needs and visiting the shrines with Africania mission, I decided I couldn't live without speaking to a third party. I was able to find Millicent. She was a Fiashidi in Kliko, but she escaped after 12 years of servitude. She was the only Fiashidi, or Trompushi rather, that we could find who had not been liberated by international needs. To confirm that Millicent was indeed from a shrine in Kliko, I brought out a poster and she identified the priest she was serving. I have pity about him because I know that the way he was here is no good because if he died now, he will go to hell. Though they say that our tradition, our culture should be maintained, but it's a thing that some culture should be found and some should be abolished out of the system. So, especially the Trumpish system, it's a written on it that we should abolish because saying the uh, making the human beings a slave or to sacrifice to the God is not good. So they should abolish the especially the Trumpish system. That's why a law should be abolished out of the system of this the uh, human society. Because it's not good to sell to use a human being as a sacrifice we as human rights uh, defenders need to know that culture is part and parcel of human beings and cannot be uh, just eradicated or taken away within one day it needs a lot of education for people to understand because definitely we need to also understand the cosmology or the worldview of the people and be able to work towards that or through that. What, the way we can approach that is to bring in other human rights defenders to talk about it. If it is left between um, traditional religion and Christians, then there are two people.
people fighting. But if we bring in human rights uh, defenders, then we are now neutral. They are not uh, Christians, they are not traditional um, uh, re religion, religious people. They are just neutral people. They are just talking about human rights. Any time that um, we raise these sort of issues and we look at it from perspective of um, Christianity or traditional uh, religion, we'll be missing the point. The important thing is we should identify the human rights aspects that are involved and then talk about those issues rather than looking at it as Christians and then traditional uh, religion.